Welcome to Malware Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today is another anti-debugging video, but this time I want to show you a way how you can teach yourself how to learn anti-debugging tricks. Um, because if you if you just jump into analyzing samples and you have they use some anti-debugging tricks that you don't know, it's pretty hard to find out yourself what's uh, going on. Um, unless you have a person you can ask um, to help you out, it's well, you, you will probably not know how to search for um, the information that you need. So I actually recommend that you try to teach yourself beforehand um, anti-debugging tricks and how they work. So um, let's check this out. Now you have, um, there's a pretty cool reference for anti-reversing tricks by Peter Ferry, that's the this one, I'm already at the right page. <laughs> That's the ultimate anti-debugging reference. Uh, it's a few years old, so but still valid. And um, we will check out a very simple anti-debugging uh, check. The is debugger present function. That's in uh, the kernel 32 DLL. And um, well, since Windows 95, okay returns a non-zero value if a debugger is present, of course. So you can call this function and you can check uh, if it returns zero or not. Um, but most malware authors won't, or they, they might not want to call the function directly because it's then being shown in the imports and then you will know what's wrong immediately. So um, there's another way to do this. And that's by uh, checking the flag, the bean debug flag yourself. And uh, that's this second code snippet right here. And the bean debug flag is part of the process environment block. That's a structure in memory with information about the process. And um, now that that might be not so obvious what this means, but I will explain this right here. Um, there's another structure, the thread information block. It's a data structure and sometimes also called thread environment block, so TEB or TIB. And the, you can access this structure using a um, segment register called FS. FS0, that's the beginning of the thread information block. And at FS30, there is the address to the process environment block. That's exactly what we need. So that's what they are doing here. They put the address of the process environment block into EX. And uh, the process environment block is, uh, well, only partially um, documented, but this flag is yeah, the second byte of the structure. And for that reason, we add two, so we get to um, the being debugged flag. And we compare this being debugged flag to zero. So, and if it's not equal zero, it means jump to being debugged to the part of the code that's been executed at the um, program process is being debugged. So, and that's, yeah, that's what this snippet does. And, um, now, it's pretty important that you can experiment with the code yourself. So that's why I recommend that you get an assembler um, compiler, like uh, AFS, AFSM, flat assembler. Uh, I will put the link below also for the reference here. And yeah, just write your own code and compile it for testing. That's really makes pretty much sure that you get this into your brain. If you code it yourself, it's more likely to stick in, in your brain um, how this stuff works. Uh, otherwise it might be gone two days after you you try to understand this snippet here. So um, just get this this frame um, 
looks a lot looks like a lot of code it's actually not that that much code um, that part here is just the imports that you need to access exit the process and to show a message box and um, so we have a message box for the good boy that's that means if the process is not being debugged we show the good boy message and that says says everything's fine have a good day and the bad boy message is re here and it will say, I got you, stop debugging me. So that's our snippet of three lines uh, from the ultimate anti-reversing -re reference. Yeah, this, these three lines here uh, are the same here. And that's actually everything you, you mostly need to exchange or change for uh, testing the snippets that you find in here. So once you have the frame, uh, I will post the paste the link so you can use the code for flood assembler yourself. Um, once you have the frame, you just have to change this part of the code to get um, compile your own anti debugging um, binary. And that's what we will do now. We compile this code. It says everything went fine, and here we have the is being debugged binary. Yeah, and of course it's not being debugged, so it says everything's fine, I, I run normally. And um, if we open up this sample in Oli, it's a different story. Please disable your plugins. Uh, the plugins, a lot of the plugins like Oli Advanced, they um, automatically um, have anti-anti-debugging stuff in there, so disable them if you want to learn. And um, so let's check this out. What is it doing? It says I got you to stop debugging me. So um, it realized, oh, the the check um, shows that the process is being debugged, and you can step through the code and see what's happening. So, for instance, now we got the address to the process environment block here. So let's just look at this. Here it is, and that's our our flag, um, and that's the process environment um, block area, and here's the flag that shows one, which means it's being debugged. So you could probably change it right here. Edit fill with zero, yeah. And if we step again, it says everything's fine. So we changed the value in the structure and everything's fine. So that was the value that shows that the process is being debugged. Um, all right, another way to do this or uh, to, to monitor this structure is using process hacker. Uh, come on. Um, process hackers uh, similar to Process Explorer with similar capabilities. Um, now you can um, right click on the process, click on properties, and in the general tab you see there's the address to the process environment block. Okay, so we know it's there. And you have the memory tab where you can um, check what's in the memory and also in the process environment block, which is here. So again, we see the one in here that shows that it's being debugged. And um, we open this up where it says everything's fine. And we check it out as well. Um, so, okay. And here you see the difference. There's uh, the, the flag is here zero, so it's not being debugged. And here's it's one and it's being debugged. So that's, um, I believe, a good way to experiment yourself with the anti debugging tricks and how you can defeat them either by um, editing the memory or edit editing the assembler code. So you can as well just um, change the jump in the code right here. We could say, please jump always. Uh, so we don't say jump if equal, we say jump, simple. Okay, and uh, 
then of course <laughs> now I changed it symbol and now if we step it says everything's fine so and you can also experiment uh, how the plugins change the behavior now here we have the Oli advanced plugin and that has a is debugger present anti anti debugging function and if you turn this on I'm not sure if you have to restart Oli for that to work but yeah it says everything's fine so that's the plugin that I think it changes the structure the, of the process environment block. Um, yeah, so makes this automatically for you, so you don't have to do it. Um, yeah, and that's it for today. Um, that's a good way to learn yourself, um, experiment, and then you will really um, make it stuck, stuck in your head. So you know it next time when you see it in an actual sample. Yes, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope to see you next time.